Hi there, my name is Andy McIntosh. I'm one of the senior lecturers in paramedic science here at the University of Northampton. And I'd like to welcome you to our ambulance simulation suite where we train all our paramedic students um, in the real life scenarios that they might experience when they're out in practice. Quite unique to the University of Northampton, this ambulance uh, would actually appear on the back of a real live road vehicle. Um, and we went all the way to Germany to get it shipped across uh, to the university and it was built in situ on level three. So it was quite a challenge for them. But we can shut our students in here. Um, it's got cameras that we then um, relay all those feeds back to our computers and control it and simulate what it would be like uh, for the paramedics in the back of a real ambulance. And you can see behind me we've got our mannequin who's currently alive, you'll be pleased to know. He's breathing quite well. Um, these mannequins might not look realistic, uh, but their chests will go up and down, they will breathe, they make sounds, they have pulses, you can collapse lungs, swell up their tongue, um, everything that you want to simulate for a critically ill patient. So it relies very much on the student going in and uh, evaluating that patient and assessing them and then taking actions depending on what they find. So this is one of our newest features at the university. This is our immersive room, uh, which makes it part of our ambulance lab. And the brilliant uh, element of this is that we can transport any of our paramedic students to anywhere in the world uh, to create a scenario. So at the minute we've got what looks like a nice little country town uh, road backdrop. Uh, there's live traffic moving around us in the background so students can evaluate the scene's safety and whether it's okay for them to approach and evaluate the mechanism of injury. So for example here, got a small child that's been hit by a car but you can see it's quite a low speed uh, road which they can assess and weigh up whether they need to go to trauma centers or whether the local ED is going to be sufficient enough. We can also make our own scenarios so um, we can film around Northamptonshire and make it local and relevant to the students so they'll uh, be in familiar settings when they're out practicing. So this is John, this is one of our mannequins um, that I was discussing earlier. What we try to do at the university is make sure that we use um, quite high fidelity situations. So although the mannequin doesn't look real, the idea is that as a, as a tutor, we're not telling the student what they should be finding. So you can probably see his chest is going up and down here. So rather than us telling the student what the respiratory rate is, we're expecting them to actually go in and count it. Similarly, you can check for pulses on this patient and double check uh, the rate from that point of view. You can see if their blood pressure is low because we can drop the radial pulse um, and there'd only be a carotid pulse. If they get their stethoscopes and listen to his lungs, um, we can change the sounds at any point. So we might say he's getting asthma um, and we can make him wheeze. And then the student will hear that on their stethoscope. I have turned it up quite loud, hopefully you can hear that. It's not that obvious for the students, they have to listen um, appropriately. We can get the patient to cough. Um, if you do the wrong thing, they can run. So um, it's always a bit disconcerting when they're shutting the back of the ambulance and the mannequin starts doing all of these elements. Um, one of the key things we try and simulate is trauma as well. So you can collapse the patient's lung. Um, and then the student should be able to identify that. And when we're training cardiac arrest scenarios, we teach them to look for signs of life. So it might be look for breathing, um, feel for pulses, which you can replicate on these mannequins. So they're really state of the art, they're really easy to control on here um, and really add something to our simulation experience. These are our monitors that we use for the paramedic students uh, whilst they're in practice. And they're actually iPads, but the, the brilliant feature of these is they will replicate the actual monitor that they'll uh, use in practice. So this is the Lifepack 15 monitor, which anyone that's familiar with ambulance programs probably sees it in the background. Why this is so useful is we can set all the observations as we want on the, the control iPad. Um, and then the students will get to see those observations change in real time. So for example, if they don't have oxygen on the patient, um, we can drop the oxygen saturations down um, to a level and see whether the student actually responds to that rather than in the past where we would have had to have said, your oxygen levels are dropping, which gives them the obvious prompt. So we can see how well they're paying attention to the different observations that are going on. Uh, all the buttons function, so we can do blood pressure, um, which they can monitor and see whether the patient's improving to treatment or deteriorating. Um, if we've got a patient that's maybe having a heart attack, you can do an ECG and input it all as you would for a real um, monitor. It prints it out and then they get to interpret the 12 lead ECG and they can zoom in, which is a feature you don't get in real life, uh, but we give them the benefit of the doubt there. And we can show uh, patients are having heart attacks on that, maybe electrolyte imbalances, it can all be replicated. 
If they want to uh, do a cardiac arrest scenario where they're gonna shock the patient, again, we can get them to simulate this uh, without any risk of any injury because there's no actual uh, shocking or defibrillation going on. And again, they just train that um, for the real life scenarios when they come along. So really good feature. And the, the massive benefit of this, because it's software, if the monitors change in future in practice, we can actually update that um, so we can keep up to date with what they'll be using in practice in the ambulance services.